Hello guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Design Palette and I am back again today with another tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to animate the Gmail app icon. This is the second part of the two-part series. In the first part I show you how you can use Illustrator to design the app icon so that we can animate it in After Effects. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely do and then you can come back to this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we jump into After Effects, there is something that I need to do in Illustrator that everybody should do in Illustrator. If I go to my document setup, uh, you can see that, uh, let's go to the artboards, uh, you can see that the size is 192 by 192. But we want it to be 1920 by 1080, which is super HD, full HD. Okay, so if I zoom back, you see our app icon is pretty small. So we're going to select this. And hold down shift and alt and we are going to go and scale this up make sure that each and every individual element that you are going to be animating is on a separate layer and uh, we're going to press ctrl s to save and that's going to save it and uh, we are ready to get into after effects all right so here i'm in, in after effects and uh, this is my final project file i have now i will leave the project file down below in the description if you guys are interested to learn more and see how i did it but i'm not going to be doing this as a step by step but i will be breaking down every single keyframe every single property and every single element that i animated so if you guys are new to after effects i recommend that you at least watch this video twice or thrice to understand what's happening i will be as detailed as possible or you can go check out my other tutorials related to UI animation, which are fairly simpler and easier to understand. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to your project panel over here and you can double click and open up your Illustrator file that you saved. Now you want to do is set the import kind to composition and you want to set the footage dimensions to layer size and not document size. Go ahead and click on OK. And that's going to open up a pre-composition with all the layers. As you can see, I have every single different layers that are stacked on, on top of the other. All right, that is good. Now, once we have this, we are gonna start animating each of these elements, which is what I'm gonna be breaking down. So I'm just gonna delete this pre-comp because I have all my layers here. All right, so I'm gonna start one by one and uh, let's see how we did it. So the first one is, uh, is the bottom, which is the left white background which is nothing we don't have any layer on that and the, the on top we have the bottom shadow which is going to be static as well and on top of that we have the white top white triangle now i changed the color a bit so i added an effect called this fill you can go here and choose fill and uh, that allows me to add any color i want so uh, the color i used is eb eb and eb all right and the next one is below that we have the red strip all right Okay, now here is the first animation that we do. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have the top white triangle selected and you want to parent it by using this parent lick, which use, which says parent pick whip. And I'm going to go and drag it on to the red strip. All right. And if you don't find it, you can click on this button. It says toggle switches and modes. Uh, I think it should be there irrespective of any mode you're in, or you can directly choose the red strip. So what that does is if I select my red strip and I move it, left and right you see the top white triangle also moves along with it so it's basically parented and attracts every properties that the red strip gets the next thing you want to do is you want to click on this button which makes it a 3d layer so i can rotate it in the x y and the z directions and you want to click on the 3d layer for the top white triangle as well if you don't turn it on then the parenting does not work so i'm going to press u on my keyboard and as you can see i have some animation and some masks created i will get back to that in a moment but first I'm going to talk about this layer which is the white fill so what you want to do is you want to press ctrl d or command d or you go to edit and choose uh, duplicate duplicate which is going to create a copy which is my red strip too so uh, what all i did was renamed that to red strip white fill if i turn that on and if i hide the red strip layer this is what you get and i've added a simple fill to this the red strip white fill as well and if i open this up you see it is f7 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 all right and if i press u on a keyboard it's going to show me the keyframes as you can see i have animated the orientation now before you animate the orientation you want to move the anchor point to the top now, originally, if I show you how it looks, 
As you can see, the anchor point here is at the center, but we want to move it to the top. So to move it to the top, what you want to do is you want to click on this button which says the pan behind tool. You want to click on it and make sure that it is in 3D. All right, so you want to choose the red strip white fill layer and you want to just click on the white, the green arrow and then just move it up and make sure that it aligns perfectly till here. So that's the first step. You don't have to animate it, animate it later, but first you need to move the anchor point. All right, and then you can click on V to move, get into the selection tool and uh, you are good to go. All right, so, so I'm not gonna show you how much values I put for each keyframe and how many duration, but you can download the project file and get the values yourself. But as you can see at the beginning, my orientation is zero. A few frames forward, I change the orientation on the X axis and the flap moves up as you can see. All right, and then it goes down and then comes back to the original position. And then it goes back up slightly. As you can see, it goes back up slightly and comes back down, just like a simple ball bouncing. The speed and the force reduces as the number of times it bounces. So simple physics. So now I'm gonna turn on the red strip layer. And as you can see, uh, it, it doesn't quite look right. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to either parent the, the red layer to the white layer. So in that case, you can see the red also moves along with it. Or you could copy the keyframes, but I think parenting uh, did the job pretty well. All right, and uh, there you go. There you have, we have our first animation done. All right, so moving on, next we have, the shadow is the last part, so I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come into the left flap and the white flap. Okay, so now let's talk about the reveal of the, uh, the red color. So if I press U on my keyboard, you can see I have a keyframe for the mask expansion. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to none, so to show you how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the ellipse tool, and I'm gonna go somewhere over here, hold down shift and alt and control and make sure you create a big circle like so okay and then what you want to do is you want to come here to the beginning of any of the animation that you want to start animating it from uh set the mask x set the feather to okay let's see what was the feather here uh so 20 so we want to set the feather to 20 as here so what feather does is if i go and press mm on my keyboard twice that's going to open up all the properties if I go to the mask expansion and I start reducing it, you can see what's happening. So if I set the feather of this to zero, this is what we get. If I set the feather of this to 20, it gets, it gives you that nice faded blur effect. And the mask expansion is what you want to animate. So at the beginning, it's going to be uh, pretty uh, low. And then as the animation progresses, you can go ahead and increase this up and uh, it's going to fill that out. Pretty cool, so that's how the masking works. I'm gonna go delete that one and uh, turn this back to add. All right, so this is how it's gonna work and that's really good. So we're gonna be using the same concept for the mask, the left flap and the left right flap. Uh, the shadow, I'm gonna come down to that later. So I'm gonna turn on the left flap white fill. Uh, it's the same fill I used, that is F7, F7, F7. And uh, the left flap, which is basically the red part, if I press U, you can see I have the mask expansion here. And there you go, as you can see, the animation is happening. I did the same thing for the right flap as well. So just duplicate the layer, add in the, duplicate the layer, add in the fill. And once you add in the fill, you can add in the mask and animate them. All right, so uh, as you can see, the same thing happens. Make sure that they are at the same time, they happen at the same time. All right, and uh, looking pretty good. You can press shift and the slash key on your keyboard to fit the composition to the screen. A simple cool trick if you guys are interested to learn. All right, and then we have the right triangle, which is has no animation, and the left triangle, which has no animation either. And we have the white background, which is the overall background. All right, so now coming on to the shadow, if I turn this on, you can see we have this nice shadow. All right, and if I press U on my keyboard, on the shadow layer, you see we have a couple of keyframes. So let me just show you how that is done. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna select the white BG layer, press Control D to duplicate it, and you can call this mask, all right? So I'm just gonna delete that and show you because I already did that. So this is the shadow mask over here. If I turn this on, you can see it is, these, is, the, it is this white layer, all right? And I'm gonna turn that off for now. Actually, let's turn it on and uh, let me do this from scratch so you guys get an idea. All right, so, this is basically my shadow mask, which is basically my white BG layer that is right there. And all below I've created a new layer. So I'm gonna press Control Y on my keyboard and I'm gonna call this shadow. All right, 
and uh, this is uh, let me just hide this. So this is completely black. All right, it's completely black. And what you want to do is with the layer selected, you want to go and click on the pen tool over here. You want to click once and uh, come over here. Hold down shift so it comes on a straight line. And uh, you can uh, close this up like so. All right, and as you can see, we created a simple mask. Let me just hide, let me turn on transparency here so you guys can see. All right, so we have this mask and what I've done to this mask is I have added a feather of 20 pixels. So I'm gonna press F on my keyboard to get the mask feather properties and set that to 20. And if you can see the opacity by pressing T on your keyboard, you can see it's, I've set it to five. So I'm gonna press T on my keyboard and set that to five as well. So now as you can see over here, you can see this nice shadow effect. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now the problem is, if for example, I just create a new white layer, I can show it to you better. Um, okay, so if I bring this down, as you can see, the shadow goes on to the white background as well, but that is not actually what we are looking for. What we want is to restrict it to the actual icon itself. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do is, um, delete the one that I just created. Let's go to the original one. You want to make sure that your shadow mask layer is on top and your shadow layer is the bottom. You want to come here and choose this track mat settings to alpha mat. If you don't have it, you can go to toggle switches and modes and you can get that on. So what that does is if you see here, the shadow is only restricted to the icon itself. So this layer becomes a mask. You see these two new boxes or icons that come. That's how uh, it. That's how you know that it's a track mat, and it restricts itself only to here. Now to animate it, so as you can see, if I play, as you can see, the shadow moves along with uh, the uh, you know the movement of the flap. So it's pretty simple. All you have to do is uh, make sure you are you on your keyboard. Uh, you can select this mask path properties. You can press M to get that, and press A to or V to get the selection tool, then just drag a simple box around it so it gets selected. See, this is selected and this is not selected. And uh, you can press uh, the keyframe, you can start keyframing it and then just move it up slowly until it looks good. Now I have added a little bit of curves to this so that you know it kind of gives you the realistic movement. So you can definitely uh, do that and uh, tweak it the way you want it. And uh, that's this pretty simple animation that I created. All right, so once this is over, you can put that on to a new composition. So, and I've called this Gmail effects. Uh, let's go ahead and delete the ones we don't need. All right, so let's start with the background. So we have a simple white background first, and then we have uh, the actual Gmail composition. Now, if I press T on my keyboard, you can, so S on my keyboard, you can see that the scale is set to 60. That's because at the beginning, I have this nice, simple uh, fading animation. All right. Now, I also have a layer called as the fader. I just duplicated the background layer, called it fader. And if I press T on my keyboard, you can see that it kind of fades. All right. So if I turn this off, it's already 100% visible. If I turn this on, if I turn this on, you can see it gives this nice fading animation. So I have animated the scale properties. So at the beginning, I've set it to 47%. And at the big and just before the animation actually starts, I have set this to 50%. And then at the end, I've set it to 60%. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I have pre I have animated the position properties as well. So as you can see, I have a couple of keyframes over here. So it jumps. So to see the jump, I can show you. I've added this kind of a very steep graph. So uh, it means that it's going to jump first fast and then it's gonna slowly slow down. I'm sure if you have used After Effects, you're gonna be knowing this, but if you don't, you can definitely download the project files and tweak and play around with it. And a simple jump and a jump again. All right, so that's basically the position and the scale. And we have the fader at the end. Now the last one is the red solid. So it's basically, if I press U on my keyboard, I can show you the keyframes. It's basically a simple circle with a red color uh, with a red mask, actually, to be honest, uh, I just use the ellipse tool and we have the scale is uh, animated. As you can see, the scale animates from uh, from size zero to the size, uh, you know, exceeding the composition, the size of the composition. And the opacity is uh, reduces to from 100 uh, from actually 25. Actually, if I set this to 100, uh, you can see how it looks. It's pretty dark. If I press this to 25, you can see uh, it's pretty faded and, uh, you know, at the, it just fades away in the end. And the last one 
to finish it off is the shadow. As you can see, we have this, the same concept that I showed you for this, but in this, I'm not using any track mat. I am just creating a black solid by pressing Control Y, creating a black color solid. And once I have the solid, I'm adding a fast blur, adding the mask. So make sure you have the layer selected, press G or use the pen tool and click, click around to create a shape. And then you can, I've set the opacity of this to five, which is pretty low. And one thing that I want to mention is um, before the, so you want to create the shape before the animation starts. So somewhere over here, the animation is still not happening and you create it. And if I go and set the parent of this to the Gmail tutorial, it gets parented. Let me show you, even if the icon jumps and moves around, the shadow also moves along with it. All right, so but if I go and don't set this to none and play, you can see the shadow isn't moving, which looks pretty kind of weird. Uh, so you want to make sure that it's parented and uh, it's moving around. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it and loved it. Also, the project files are linked down below in the description. So feel free to check that out. And if you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comment sections down below. And I'll definitely see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye bye.